Hi, my name's Keith Cooper from No Flight Images and I'm going to have a look at making a black and white print on a Canon Pro 200. Now the Pro 200, this printer here, is a die-based printer. It's the successor to the Pro 100. Now I've got detailed review, I've got other videos about this. In fact I've got a video specifically looking at gen generally printing black and white. Um, which I'll put links to in the notes for this uh, particular video here. But in this one, I'm just looking at making a print on a fine art paper. Now I'm using this particular paper because it works well with this printer. And there is the key for getting good quality black and white out of the Pro 200. It's testing your papers. Now this is a uh, Canson paper. Uh, it is a rag photographic. It's a 310 gram paper. So it's quite a stiff paper and it's a very bright white smooth paper. Works well for some black and white images. Now I've looked at other prints and how that normally with printers um, I will look if there's a dedicated black and white print mode available then I'll use that for printing. But for dye based printers Sometimes it works better using a ICC profile, which is what you'd use for color printing. Normally I say if there's a black and white mode, try that. Now, with some Canon papers and some other papers as well, the black and white mode on this particular printer produces really nice black and white results. On other papers, less so. You get uh, metamorism changes where under different lighting the print may take on a slightly magenta look or a slightly greenish tinge uh, which you probably don't want with your black and white prints. So um, I know that this particular paper works well with a profile. I made a profile for this. Um, I've got lots of profiles. They're all listed in the main Pro 200 review. And uh, if there are any of uh, use, by all means, give me a shout. They are available free for non-commercial use. If you want to use them commercially, well, we can come to an arrangement perhaps. But uh, no, they are free for if you're just doing your own experimentation or if you're an amateur photographer, whatever. They're there to, to be used if they're useful. But remember, the profiles are specific to a particular type of paper or particular brand of paper. Now, you may find lots of other papers that are similar to this one. There are quite a few rag papers out there. If you look for rag papers, bright white rag papers, 310 gram smooth surface, um, you'll find a range. Now, I only test stuff that I can get here in the UK. Um, I've got links to some of them that I've used in testing, but really um, it's about experimenting. And if there's one key takeaway without even looking at me making a print for this, the Pro 200, because I get asked about this a lot, is you need to experiment. So just because somebody says a particular paper is great on another printer really tells you absolutely nothing as to how it will perform on this particular printer. You cannot generalize from one to another. You may have a good idea about something that's good, but without testing, you can't be sure. Now, I'm going to print in this instance um, a photograph I took when I was in Colorado a few years ago. It's in one of the high bits of Colorado. Um, if you're not used to driving around in mountain ranges, you may perhaps think, you know, mountains are always like the Alps, being huge mountains everywhere in front of you. Uh, but once you get up on the high plains here, we're at uh, probably 10,000 feet the mountains aren't a great deal higher. So uh, the air is quite thin and I noticed, I just stopped whilst I was driving along a road. This is south, um, oh, I can't actually remember. I'd need to check where this one was. Uh, but anyway, I just spotted the sky. There's a lovely deep blue uh, in between the clouds. I looked at the clouds and I thought this will make a great photograph in black and white. And I knew this one was going to be black and white right from the start. It's a wide angle shot. So it gives the typical wide angle look to the clouds. But I decided I like this one. So we'll give it a go. Now I've opened it up in Photoshop. You can use other things, Affinity Photo. You can even use Lightroom if you like. But I'm actually going to print using the Canon PPL software. It's free software. It's the same on Windows and PC, so it's easier for me to show examples of it in use. But anyway, there's the picture, and I'm just going to open it up in PPL. Now, 
it's opened in PPL. I've sized it for the paper. I've set the paper type to uh, heavy, heavy weight fine art, uh, fine art uh, H heavyweight fine art paper. Um, there aren't so many media types on this printer, but this one, heavyweight fine art paper, covers a lot of them with the appropriate profiles if needed, and they load via the top slot here. I found the paper feeding very reliable on this. I very rarely ever needed to use the rear slot for paper loading. Um, single sheets load perfectly well on the top here and it's just a bit more convenient than opening up the back but i've set everything here i've set a3 size to set the paper size i've set the printer one annoyance of the canon software here is that it, i move these printers around and when i move them there are different wireless networks in different parts of the house it connects to a wireless network it gets a new ip address and i have to reassign the printer so if you ever find that your printer has vanished from the settings at the top here you know the printer's there all you've done is moved it from one place to another check the network settings at the top there because it can lose them but anyway we've got it set Top feed, high quality, because I know that makes a difference on the printer here, does actually produce a better dot range. I've looked at this, I've got a video that looks at detail settings. Um, I'm using it, I'm printing this as a color image. So it's color mode, and I've selected the profile I made when I did the testing for this printer. So I've got a profile for it, everything's set up. I'm using relative colorimetric rendering intent, and I have set black point compensation. I've ticked it on there. If you don't set black point compensation, then with some profiles, you will get crunched up shadows, quite noticeably crunched up shadows on it. And um, the black point compensation fixes that. Won't go into why, but it's a, it's a, you won't cause any harm by selecting it. Now, there's the picture. All I need to do is go to print. Reminds me of the settings. Now, when I loaded the paper in here, I set it to A3+, plus to heavy weight, fine art paper, uh, HFAP setting. I've set it here, so it's set in the printer. Now, I always set in the printer and here, just as a way of remembering what I've done, because if you do many prints and you change papers, you will forget stuff. And a sheet of paper like this is not cheap to lose one just because you couldn't be bothered to look at a setting or something. But anyway, there we go. So we've got that set there. I'm just going to print this. And now we'll wait for the data to be transferred to the printer. It's a slowish laptop, so it may take a minute or two. The printer is now showing that it is loading stuff. It's making the whirring noises. Because I've moved the printer, it may detect that and may decide to do a little bit of jiggery, moving the print head about and things. Printers do stuff like that. You can never tell what they're going to do. They have a mind of their own when it comes to this. Now I've got a low ink warning here on the magenta ink. A little bit of colored ink will be used in the black and white printing. It just gives a, it's where the neutrality set in the paper and the ink mix. Because remember, the black is not pure black on these. There's maybe slight warmth in it. But here we go. Ink may have run out. Replacing the ink tank is recommended. Well, it looks like this time. I've taken it a bit too far and I need to just put a new ink in. I wait until it does this before I do it. So we'll just have a break here and I go and find another ink cartridge. Well, here we are. Press the button and I'm going to replace the ink cartridge. Now, you get quite a few warnings of a low ink cartridge before you absolutely need to change the ink cart. So not a problem here. I was expecting it and had one ready. Um, really take the low ink warnings as a bit more of a reminder that you ought to be getting some spare ink than uh, necessarily is that uh, you're imminently going to run out. Take the orange tab off that. Clicks into place. Close that, and uh, we should be printing again fairly shortly. And the paper loads, does a little bit of jiggling where it's lining the paper up, and we should now get our print. 
I've set this to the high quality print mode, which prints a bit slower, um, produces a more accurate dot, ink dot layer on the paper, uh, gives you slightly better quality detail and slightly smoother areas in smooth tones. Um, so I've got a video that looks at optimal quality settings for uh, when you're you know, printing with the 200 here. Uh, doesn't make a great deal of difference, but I think it makes just enough difference that I now only print photos on this on the high quality setting. Incidentally, in case you're wondering about the resolution, uh, this image uh, would print larger than this, and I've just sized it as is. I haven't done any special sizing, resizing to a, uh, a magic number of pixels per inch or anything like that. I'm just printing it as is and I've scaled it here in the PPL software. Perfectly fine for that. It'll do everything I need for it. Works well. Here comes the print. Now, when you're printing on papers like this, do check that the leading edges, there's no dings on the corners, no raised corners or anything. Because if there's one point where you're likely to get a head strike and a mark on the paper, it's on this leading edge here on the corners. Uh, not a mark here, that's good. Well, it was a fresh piece of paper taken out of a box. Keep your paper in its box, keep it flat, and that will stop getting curls like this. Let's see the paper coming out. Now, the lighting in here is um, LED lighting, and I've got a bit of sunlight now coming in through from a uh, window there, so it's reflecting in the room. So I'm quite interested to see what the neutrality of this image is like. It's pretty good. Now, I'm not sure how it will show up on the video, but as I say, the one thing when you want to test with papers when you're testing them with this particular printer is have a good look and see whether you get a better result from the ABW, it's not the ABW, the black and white print mode or a color profile. There's no way of knowing beforehand. Now, most of the Canon papers printed slightly better with the black and white mode, but this one's not a Canon paper and this one I've got a profile for. Well, the detail is looking good on this. I mean, I know the image, I took it several years ago. I've printed it much larger than this. And in fact, it's one of the images I'll use when I next get a really big printer, a much bigger printer than this here to test. This is one of the images that I'll be looking at how to print a lot larger and uh, aspects of resizing, sharpening and things like that. But for printing at this size, 13 by 19 inch, um, this is A3 plus paper. This one looks fine. No problem there. We'll see what it comes out when it comes out of the printer. Well, here's our print. It has all the level of detail I expect from it. Now, I know this image quite well, so I can actually have a look at some of the fine detail with a hand lens here. And yeah, it's, it's fine. Um, no surprise there. There we go, one black and white print, um, high up in Colorado one day. Um, it was the sky that caught my attention, uh, rather than the mountains on in this instance. And uh, yeah, it comes out every bit as good as I thought it would. So I uh, hope this has been of some interest. Say black and white, you can definitely do it with the uh, Pro 200, just takes a bit of care. Do have a read of the article I've got that goes into this in a lot more detail. There's another video as well. And these are things that uh, you know, make the difference. It may seem tedious going through all the detail looking at this, but it makes a difference between a print that looks okay and a print that looks great. Of course, the photo itself has to be half decent to start with as well, but uh, that's another matter altogether. I hope this has been of use. If you've got any questions, please do let me know. Um, I've still got this printer and the Pro 300 here for a while, so um, I can do some more uh, specific printing aspects, but let me know because that's quite often where I get ideas of what people are looking for. So uh, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel and uh, thank you.